Okay, so in this video, we're going to take a look at waves, and more specifically, we're going to focus in this video on transverse waves. So, first of all, I think a question we should ask ourselves is what is a wave generally? And we're going to do that by looking at what a wave actually does. So some examples of waves you may have come across, uh, like wave, water waves or waves in the sea. Hopefully you've seen some of those. Um, you may have come across a Mexican wave, which is uh, def would definitely be classified as a wave under the physics principles. And you may also have come across electromagnetic waves. The most likely one you've come across is visible light, obviously, because we're surrounded by it all the time. There are others like seismic waves and sound waves, uh, but let's press on. Okay, so. Like I said, to essentially get an essence of what a wave is, what we're going to do is we're going to describe what a wave does. So a wave moves energy and possibly also information between two points, but doesn't cause a net, and the key word there is net, movement of particles. So what that doesn't mean is that they don't move particles. Some waves do move particles. But what that means is once the wave has passed through, the particles will be back where they started from. So it's no net movement of particles. But essentially, it's a way of moving energy and therefore also moving information between two points. So then we have a sort of a category of waves, if you like, that we call mechanical waves. And these are waves that travel or transmit energy by vibrating particles. So if you see the word mechanical, we're talking about particles. There is a second category, which is essentially the opposite, called electromagnetic waves, and they don't move energy by vibrating particles. They uh, work in a completely different way. So some examples of mechanical waves would be seismic waves, like water waves, sound waves, those kind of things. Some examples of electromagnetic waves would be visible light, you know, infrared, ultraviolet, all of those kind of things are electromagnetic waves. Okay, so those are what a wave does and our first category of waves or first two categories of waves. Okay, so just to illustrate a little bit what I meant. So on here, the blobs on the diagram are there to represent particles. Um, so you can see that if we have this wave, so this is what we'd call a transverse wave. So what you can see is the particles are vibrating up and down, but they're not experiencing any net movement. They're vibrating up and down around the same point. They're not moving left or right. Uh, they're staying in exactly the same overall position, even though energy in this wave is moving from left to right. So just to look at describing that. So the uh, we've looked at two possible categories of waves. We are mechanical or electromagnetic. Now we're going to look at another category of waves. So um, we're going to; those are called transverse waves. So both electromagnetic and mechanical can be transverse waves. So it's a separate categorization system. So some examples of transverse waves. So water waves, light. Is it uh, a, one of the types of seismic waves uh, are also transverse as well, the secondary or shear type seismic waves. So those are just some examples that you can see. Um, so in terms of how we describe a transverse wave, so transverse waves cause oscillations perpendicular to the direction of energy transmission. So what that means is if the energy is moving from left to right, the oscillations will be up and down, so at 90 degrees to the way the energy is traveling. And this is our diagram we typically use to describe a transverse wave. And there are a few key terms we use to describe waves which allow us to compare them to each other. So let's have a look at those things. So one thing we use to describe it is the wavelength. Uh, which is usually described as the distance between adjacent peaks, but you can actually measure it between any two adjacent identical points. That, that, that's not a problem, but typically we see it between adjacent peaks. So we describe different transverse waves in terms of their wavelength. We also might describe a wave in terms of its speed or the distance the wave transfers energy per second. We might describe it in terms of its amplitude, so how far the vibrations are able to go from an equilibrium position. And 
then we've got uh, what the equilibrium session actually is. That's where the medium, and just to highlight what medium means, so it's a fancy term for uh, the material a wave is moving through. So whenever you see the word medium, we're not talking about some kind of clairvoyant here. Uh, we're talking about the material a wave is me moving through. And essentially, uh, the equilibrium, equilibrium position marks where the medium or the, the material would be if there wasn't a wave passing through. And then amplitude is how far the vibrations can be from that position. OK, so if we go back to our diagram of transverse wave, we can see we've got on here marked the wavelength. So the distance between the same point again. Uh, so that's your wavelength. We could also have measured the wavelength across here. As long as it's between the same point, it doesn't matter where we measure it from, but it's the distance between adjacent ones. We can see our amplitude is shown here. It's the maximum vibration or maximum displacement from this one. And this line in the middle is here to mark where the equilibrium position is or where the particles would be if um, there were no wave passing through. And in this diagram, obviously, we can't show wave speed because we can't see it moving, but it'll be the distance uh, that it, it's moving energy here. OK, so just in terms of this one, the direction that energy is being transferred. So, so this is the way energy is being transferred. And we can see the particles are vibrating up and down, so they're vibrating perpendicular to the direction of energy transfer. OK. So um, just a quick note about a specific type of waves. So essentially, we're going to be here describing transverse. Uh, so what that means is that the vibrations are at 90 degrees to the energy. And we're talking about mechanical, so this only applies to transverse waves that move particles. But if we're looking at that type of wave, an example of this would be water waves or um, S-type seismic waves. These are the kind of waves we're talking about here. So these only occur under very specific conditions. So um, particles are only able to transmit a transverse wave if there are really strong intermolecular forces between them. So uh, they work particularly well in solids and they work on some liquids where the intermolecular forces are particularly strong. So on the surface of water, they're able to travel because there's very strong forces between water molecules on the surface. So what this means is they are transverse mechanical waves do not transfer energy effectively at all in gases and they don't do it particularly well in liquids either but they work pretty well in solids so i think we need an explanation for that so essentially to start a transverse wave we need to essentially cause a particle to vibrate up like this so we have some initial displacement here now, if we want a wave to form, we need moving this particle to have an effect on the next one. We need moving this one up to also move this one up and then this one up and then this one up. And that only happens if there's a strong force between them. If there's a weak force between them, oscillating this one upwards won't have any effect on this one and we won't start a wave traveling. So that's why these transverse mechanical waves only really work effectively in solids because you need these strong forces to essentially cause a chain reaction and make all of them start vibrating. OK, so we've looked at a few things we use to describe waves. Um, I want to add in a couple more that we just use to describe waves once we can see them moving. So once we're looking at waves and observing them moving, we use two other terms to describe them. We describe the number of wave fronts per second passing through a point. That's what we call the frequency. And we would likely count the some number passing through somewhere in 10 seconds and then divide that by 10 to give us an or more accurate frequency. But essentially what we're trying to find is the number of wave fronts per second passing through a point. And then we also might be interested in time period or the time between adjacent wave fronts passing through a point. 
Um, so we haven't met wave fronts for a while. By what we mean by a wave front, a wave front marks the position of peaks of a wave. So for frequency, we would count how many of these wave fronts pass through a particular point. So maybe we'd stand somewhere and just count one, two, three wave fronts in 10 seconds, divide by 10 to get the frequency. Or if we want to get time period, we would find the time between one wave front passing through and then the next one passing through. Or most likely what we'd actually do is measure the time for 10 wave fronts to pass through and then divide by 10 to give us the an accurate time period of our wave. But that's just a refresher of what we mean by wave fronts. Essentially, we're marking where the peaks of a wave are. So we've introduced a lot of things that we use to measure waves. And now we're going to finish off by looking at how those things are related to one another. So three of them are related by what we call the wave equation. So if we do experiments, we can discover that wave speed um, is ca calculated by doing wavelength times frequency. So wave speed is measured in meters per second in this equation, wavelength in meters, and frequency is measured in a unit called hertz. So the number of waves per second is measured in this unit hertz, uh, named after a scientist who have had a massive contribution in the field of waves. Um, so that's our first equation, and these are the symbols we use. So wavelength is given the symbol lambda, frequency f, and speed v as per usual. The other equation that we use is uh, an equation linking time period and frequency. So essentially time period is the reciprocal of frequency. So if time period is measured in seconds, we can use that to calculate the frequency in hertz. And from this equation, you can see that one hertz is, in units terms, equal to one over seconds. Um, so those two are actually strongly related to each other. So those are our, our two equations. And what this means is, when we're, if we've got a wave, we don't need to measure all five things. Actually, we can measure three things and calculate the other two from them. Um, so that's why our equations might prove useful in reality.